Awesome. Well, thanks for having us again, Lisa. Um, as you said, we're from Inside Tracker. We've been working with Core, uh, I don't know, since 2015 now. So it's been fun to watch you guys grow and see some names that uh, um, we recognize from 2015 still on the team. So um, very cool to see. Um, Stevie is one of the dietitians that we work with. Um, she is also on our content team and uh, can talk, she can talk a little bit more about that and what all of that means. And we're going to talk tonight about um, what is Inside Tracker, why do triathletes, why should triathletes consider using it? And then Stevie's going to dive a bit more into some of the practical applications and how she is a dietitian recommends it or uses it with her clients. Um, so, if, and feel free to chime in if you have questions along the way. Um, there's a chat feature at the bottom of the page, bottom of the screen, um, and we'll monitor, uh, we'll monitor that, free to ask questions at any time. Um, so, I'll kick it over to Stevie and do a little, uh, she can do a little more of an intro on who she is and, and what she does for Inside Tracker. Hey guys, thanks Jonathan. Yeah. Uh, as John mentioned, I am a registered dietitian by trade. Um, I've been practicing for eight years now, um, and I've worked in almost every setting you can imagine, um, inpatient, outpatient, um, home care, hospice, everything else. But over the last, what has it been? Oh my gosh, three or four years, I've been working um, with more athletes kind of as a side hustle turned into more of a full-time hustle now. Um, I am also an endurance athlete myself. I've been with Inside Tracker as a user for four years. And then I joined the team, the content and marketing team in 2018, um, actually just coming at over two years now, April, 2018. So what I do um, as a part of that team is if you've read any of our blogs, I write some of our blogs. You might also see me occasionally on our Instagram stories, cooking with my dog. Um, we work together. We have a small group of uh, content specialists who uh, we really focus on making sure that we get you all very good information um, based on science on what we feel and also what our users and our readers feel are important and pertinent topics. So we like to kind of keep our content ever changing. I know Lisa shares our blogs. Um, I just recently wrote one about you know what to do if your races are canceled as an endurance athlete so this is where i do my little plug of the content team if there's anything you ever want to learn or know more about um you can always just send us a message on instagram or facebook or you know whatever method method works for you you can email us and say hey i want to know more about this and then um we bring it to the team you know, we'll figure out if it's a blog, a social post, a recipe ebook, whatever it might be. Um, I also do one-on-one -on -one consults for our users to kind of go through their blood work and, you know, give, you know, my eye to see what recommendations um, for you as a person would be kind of the best to help you narrow down and make a plan on how to really implement, um, you know, what your blood work results are. I think that's all for um, uh, my little bio, but you know, I'm an Ironman. I've known Lisa for many years now from racing together. Um, and I am working to, towards my um, board specialty in sports dietetics currently. And a marathon. And a marathon. Yeah. I've, yeah. Hopefully we'll see. <laughs> Forever allowed to race. <laughs> Forever allowed to race again. I've run many of them, but <laughs> Yes. Um, into that. <laughs> thank, thank you, Stevie. So as Stevie mentioned, um, what we do is all about nutrition. And our goal is to help people cut through the clutter of all the noise and bad information that's out there. You can you know, read a blog that says best foods for runners and worst foods for runners and the same food is on both lists. Um, so our goal is to help people make educated decisions on what their body needs and I might get a food recommended to me and Stevie might get, you know, eat less of that food recommended to her. So functionally what we do is we take inputs, mash, mesh it with science and tell you specific outputs. So it's as simple as, you know, eat this food X number of times a week, 
take a supplement in this specific dosage. Um, so, you know, eat fish twice a week, eat oatmeal once a day, um, take a probiotic. So again, the, the idea is to look at this comprehensive blood test, and now we're doing genetic analysis as well. Uh, and we'll soon be adding wearable device information. So you get sleep and resting heart rate. So you get all these three different types of data. So something that never changes, your genetics, something that changes maybe quarterly, your blood, and something that changes you know, every minute, which is your heart rate and sleep and sleep quality. And then depending on whatever your goals are, we'll recommend foods and supplements to help, um, help improve that. So normally we talk through how do you use Inside Tracker, when do you use Inside Tracker, and um, we have a blog that looks at a handful of different data points or points in time in the season. And normally we'll say baseline, mid-season, end of season. Right now we're in an interesting place where um, there is no season, or we're all in you know base training. Um, and the interesting opportunity with that is that it gives us the ability to potentially make better use of the time, right? There's, there are things that we can't control right now. And then there are things that we can control. Many of us are cooking more, many of us are home more. Um, and, you know, you, I'm looking at my supplements right now. Uh, and I remember to take them every day because I see them, um, you know, staring at me right next to my desk. So it's stuff like that that we can we can make better use of the time that that we have um, again through this personalized approach and then particularly for women and Stephen will Stevie will talk more about this but um, we look at something like uh, ferritin um, and it's it's actually easier to improve your iron um, stores when you're not training as hard um, so it's a it's a a good time for that as well so functionally again what we're doing is taking data mashing it up against science and then telling you, okay, here's, here's what to do based on who you are, your demographic information, your training volume, your training type, if you're running a lot, if you're cycling, et cetera. Um, and then the output is uh, essentially do this. Um, so I'm going to kick it over to Stevie. She's going to talk a bit more about um, nutrition in general and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks, Jonathan. Yeah. So, it, he's exactly right. Um, it's very easy to kind of fall into the eat this, eat, you know, not that, more of this, less of that. Um, and when we have, you know, especially as a dietitian, when, when we have a tool like somebody's blood work, it can really help you, I guess, narrow down and make a more efficient plan for what your goals are. Um, I know, of course, everyone here, you know, we're runners, swim, bike, you know, swim, bike, run, triathletes. So we often think about our performance goals, but I also like people to think about uh, using their blood work also for their health and wellness goals. Um, of course, we know eating fruits and vegetables, whole grains, those are good things to do in general. But here when, you know, I sit down with a client and I have all of their blood work history, um, it, it can shed light to things that we might be missing. Um, just trying to think of like a personal example here is, again, Jonathan mentioned ferritin. So ferritin is one of the biomarkers that is very, um, I would say one of the more pertinent markers for female athletes in particular, especially if you're premenopausal, ferritin is our stored form of iron. So it really gives us the best picture of what someone's iron status is. Um, and I will say that more often than not, my female athletes um, are below optimized or very low um, when looking at this particular biomarker. And then, you know, one of the great things about our platform is that, um, you know, you just heard me say optimize, not optimized, below optimized. So you will get a range for ferritin. My range for ferritin will look different than Jonathan's range, than Lisa's range. It's all based on you. So when you start as a user, you enter a profile that's pretty particular, takes a little bit of time, but it helps give you the most accurate results. So if you go to the doctor, get your ferritin tested, they're going to compare it to a level for, you know, like all females, like 18 to, 4, 18 to 40, 18 to 50. Um, 
which is, you know, gives you a good general guideline. We're here. Our recommenda recommendations and ranges are based on you as a person. So what your exercise habits are, um, not just duration and activity type, but also the intensity. And then we also have you kind of do what's called a fr food frequency kind of questionnaire. So how often do you eat seafood? How often do you eat X? What foods do you choose not to eat? Um, how much sleep do you get? How much sunlight do you get? So it all you know, then goes into a nice little equation by our science team and our dev team and spits out a range that is fit for you as the individual based on your lifestyle. And that's one of the really big things, again, about our product. And then, you know, when I'm looking at it in real time with an athlete is, um, you know, I feel, feel very strongly that my job as a dietitian is to help you reach your health and wellness goals and be healthy um, within your preferences and your choices. Um, if you hate Brussels sprouts, like how can I help you <laughs> be healthier without eating Brussels sprouts? Or if you want to be plant-based or you choose not to eat meat or dairy for whatever reason it might be, it's my job to then help you take your blood work results and figure out how we can make sure that your ranges are optimized for what your food choices are. And when you enter a profile and preferences, um, on like our food and nutrition page, you can literally go down to like, like beans as a whole subcategory and you can say, I don't like kidney beans and I don't like pinto beans, but I'll eat X bean and this bean. Um, so it's, it really narrows it down to what your food choices are. And I got on a really far tangent away from ferritin and there's a good dog right there and I really like it. <laughs> um, so, um, totally lost my train of thought with the dog, but again, ferritin. So everybody's levels are going to be different. Um, it's one of, again, one of the most important biomarkers, especially for the female athletes. Um, it, it, you know, plays a direct role, um, in oxygen transport. So definitely very important for the endurance athletes. Um, and it's one of those biomarkers that I like to say is a little bit more stubborn. It is harder to move. Um, it takes a little bit of a concentrated effort. And that's another thing um, when we're looking at our blood work, knowing that, okay, Stevie's ferritin is low. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna eat red meat once a week. Um, and as Jonathan mentioned, you know, with uh, ferritin levels, which is an indicator again of iron status, our body will actually absorb iron more efficiently when we're training less. Um, there's a response with inflammation that blocks that absorption of iron. So Jonathan and I and a, another friend have this thing called Red Meat Mondays because um, Mondays tend to be our lighter training days. I know when we used to be able to swim, um, it was always just like a swim day or an easy spin. So it's one of those things where we can look at your blood work results and say, oh, okay. So, you know, Lisa has a rest day on Tuesday. So Lisa needs increase her iron and if she wants to include red meat this is the most optimal day for her to include it in that meal even though like there's nothing better than like a burger after a long run if you know depending on what your goals are where your ferritin is it's it's kind of helping you it's like tetris <laughs> how can you piece these things to make it work um best for you um there are a few other biomarkers that uh, are super important for athletes. One of them is HSCRP. It shows us um, the inflammation. Again, I mentioned that how it can block iron absorption, inflammation in the body. Um, of course, a little bit of inflammation gets a bad rap, but a little bit of inflammation is a good thing. Um, we want a little bit. We just don't want to carry too much. Um, and I know I mentioned um, I've done a lot of Ironmans and that was kind of my weapon of choice before I retired. Um, in uh, kind of the endurance world. And one really important thing in your season is monitoring where your inflammation levels are. Um, too much inflammation is again, a bad thing. And this number um, can help us show what all our feats of strength are doing. I'm slightly distracted here because I'm going to share some of my blood work with you. I always like to share my HSCRP 
um, especially with my athletes. So I'm just going to share the dog you. again. <laughs> I know that's a very good dog. <laughs> we support dog audiences. Um, and also when I share my screen, you can kind of see, um, you know, what the product, what the platform looks like. Um, so let me just get through this technology technical. There we go. And if anyone wants a bigger view of her screen, oh, never mind. It does it for you. It does it. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So this is what it looks like. This is based, you know, my results and analysis. My last test, test was March 10th. And it will show you on graphs um, all of your different tests. And you'll see here is the optimized zone. Um, you'll see low, high, and then you know, just a little bit above, a little bit low. And then you get to see your trend and say like, okay, here, life was really stressful. <laughs> it was not great. Um, and, oh, wait, wait, where are we? Oh, there we go. I wasn't sure why I wasn't showing how high I was. Um, so we'll see here, I labeled this. This was after Syracuse 70.3 in 2017. And I was doing Placid the next month. And then I was doing Louisville in October. So it was very important for me to kind of check my blood work that season and see, okay, is this going to be uh, a good thing for my body or is this going to do more harm than good to try and push through all of these this racing so this was cortisol i know i was talking about hscrp i'll get back to that my tangent um this is the stress hormone of course um we cannot get rid of all stress we do need a little bit of stress right good stress um, but we don't want too much bad stress so cortisol um is catabolic so what that means is it'll it breaks you down and if someone has chronically high cortisol, um, you know, often with athletes, they're like, okay, well, I'm doing all this training and I'm putting on all this work and I'm doing X, Y, and Z, but you know, like I'm not getting any stronger. I'm not losing weight. I'm not increasing my um, lean body mass. And one of those things that can play into it is cortisol. This will, it, in essentially for athletes, it'll work against you forever if it's too high. Um, it's also just generally not healthy to have too high of cortisol. Um, so you'll see here, me and my cortisol have had a journey um, with stress going up and down. Um, but there are different techniques that I've implemented. Um, there are different foods that you can, you'll see here, recommended to eat more to help improve cortisol levels. For me, um, cortisol has been more of lifestyle interventions, which we do have um, different lifestyle re interventions recommended that you can implement. Um, for me, some of it was more yoga, more meditation, more walking, um, just more things that helped release stress. My dog, um, <laughs> another one. So this is, you know, kind of it in action. And then for each, um, you know, biomarker each group will have the science there for you and different recommendations um, based on you. So let me find my HSCRP here. Oh, I always love to show this one. Yep, so this is the inflammation indicator. <laughs> and we'll see here that this, is, this was after that same year. This was after I did Ironman Lake Placid in July very, very high. You'll see the optimized range is right here. And then this was after Ironman Louisville. And that one, I was like, okay, I need to take an extra big uh, off season this year. Like I really need to make sure that I take extra rest, do more active recovery, because this is not, this is not good for me at all. Um, the, and you'll see the, highest, the highest I'd ever seen was a third of that after uh, <laughs> six hours of, of downhill pounding in the Grand Canyon. Yeah. Yeah, this was three times higher than that. 19.5. Okay, well, we could do it, Ironman Louisville. What do you want to, what do you want to <laughs> tell, say to her? It was a good I race. <laughs> I know, it was a PR, right? <laughs> so then, then it was a lot of rest. And then I have to say I'm, I'm quite proud um, of everything I've implemented since then because I have done a couple more Ironmans in here. I did two more in 2019. Um, so really working for me, it was on um, looking at anti-inflammatory foods that kind of fit my food preferences. And supplementation was here was one of the things that worked for me. Um, adding in some fish oil supplements, ALA, um, was one of those um, recommendations that I took and was like, hey, 
homegirl can only eat so much salmon. I can only afford so many avocados. So here a supplement is going to be a thing that works for me. Um, and with all of our supplement, uh, any kind of biomarker, any recommendation that might say, hey, um, oh, here we go. I found one. Uh, supplement. Uh, here now in our drop downs on show, show more, we have, you know, telling you a little bit more, okay, this is what it is. Um, this is the best time to take the supplement. And these are our suggested brands, which is side note. Uh, we don't have any affiliation with any sort of supplement company. We don't make any money. There's no kickbacks. Um, these are all different brands using third-party testing, labdoor.com, that we, um, registered dietitian team, has considered, okay, this is a good, safe, reputable brand, because of course, um, I'm sure most of you are probably familiar that the supplement um, industry is not regulated by the FDA, so it's something that I really, as a dietitian, encourage people to use caution with, um, and it's also just our disclaimer here that it's just really easy to throw supplements at something. You, you know, I often see people say, oh, I'm really tired all the time, maybe I need B12. And they just start taking B12 out of nowhere. And then I see them and their B12 is sky high. And I'm like, do you feel anxious or dizzy at all? There are negative effects of having too much. Um, so we like to say, you know, just don't supplement just because um, having your blood work done, your, you know, your that information on hand, you can say, okay, I can probably tackle this with diet, with eating, or hard stop, I think I need a supplement to help me get this, um, you know, biomarker back into, you know, what my optimized range is. So we also tell you like how to dose it, um, again, the best time to take it. And of course, supplement warnings, you should always um, consult with your healthcare provider if you do start a new supplement, um, just because there can be certain um, interactions if you're on medications or where it's contraindicated, just of course, um, to say, stay healthy and safe there. Um, so that's like a fun newer feature that makes me really happy that we have that because it can get really confusing. Um, even if you identify that a supplement might be the right thing for you, then how do you dose it? Just having that information on how to dose it appropriately for you is also very, very helpful. Um, and the other thing, oh, and here's, and here's the um, iron panel ferritin. You'll see here another journey with ferritin. Again, it's a very stubborn biomarker, um, but very important. Um, and the last ones I really usually like to talk about with athletes, where is it? Is um, our sex hormone group? It's somewhere. I know I've asked a question. Does everybody know what ferritin is? Did I say it? Stored form, stored form of iron. <laughs> Perfect. There we go. That's, just, just in case. You Steve, never know. Um, another question. Steve. Oh, yeah. Another question about um, feeling differently from those high cortisol and inflammation markers. Did, did you feel different? Or maybe talk about injury risk. Oh, yeah. Did I feel different? Did I feel? <laughs> I didn't feel great. Um, but yes, you are at a higher injury risk when you do have those levels that are higher um, above your optimized ranges. Yes, that's a, good, that's a, that's a great little segue, Jonathan. Um, and that's why, again, when I mentioned the HSCRP, I helped to use that and cortisol as an indicator of, oh, do I need to take a longer off season or um, can I get back into training? I use that after Placid to take a little bit more time off, do a little bit more active recovery before um, building back into Ironman Louisville. There are other um, biomarkers that we test, liver enzymes, ALT and AST. Um, they're also found in the muscle. Um, so those are also good indicators of muscle damage um, and allowing yourself more, your, you know, your body more time to rest, recover and repair um, after some of those bigger training blocks, after some of those events um, to, you know, help to prevent um, injury as well. Um, the sex hormone group, I just want to make sure I bring this up. Um, it's, it's a very good indicator for 
uh, athletes, especially endurance athletes, to make sure that they're getting um, enough rest and enough calories. Um, we always test testosterone, but specifically for females, we test SHBG and DHEAS. Um, we don't test estrogen, estrogen levels. A lot of people ask this because they will fluctuate throughout the month. Um, and it's hard enough for especially people like us to find a day to test after, sorry, my dog dropped his phone, um, without having a hard session because we ask that you do either a light training session or um, like a recovery day before you do your blood work, just because you'll see my ALT and AST were high in my last test. It's because I lifted the day before my test. Um, I didn't really have any choice <laughs> when my blood test was scheduled, but we want to make sure when you're coming in that you're getting um, kind of the most accurate uh, results. So Again, we don't test estrogen, so we don't have to worry about it fluctuating throughout your cycle. Um, but this will show you right here, March 27th last year, I was speaking for Ironman Texas. And I can tell you right here, even as a dietitian, I was not getting enough calories and enough rest and recovery because I see this number going up. Um, you know, there are other factors that play into things like SHBG, um, like oral contraceptives. I have no problem saying that I'm on oral contraceptives. And if you, are on them or have been on them in the past, even if it's been years, um, you will, it's very common to see a high SHBG and that's just because you're flooding your system with hormones when you take an oral contraceptive. Um, so that's very common to see this number in the red zone for anyone who's been on OCs. But also again, when I see the spike and the timing of it, knowing what my training was and what was going on in my life, I can tell you like guilty as charged, I was not eating enough. And even though I was eating a ton, this is an indicator of being like, okay, you're not getting enough calories. You're not getting enough rest. There's too much stress on your body. Um, same with DHES. Again, higher levels of stress are associated with this number. Um, also, again, hormonal contraceptives play into this as well. Um, again, why you see it low on me. Um, but those are two kind of very helpful indicators to know if you're getting enough calories and getting enough rest, no matter what anyone might say. Um, it, it usually ends up being that most of my endurance athletes need more. Um, those are the, the big biomarkers that I usually like to touch upon. Um, Jonathan, any, anything else while I'm on the blood work page that you think? Uh, no, I think that's a good summary of uh, functionally. Yeah what it looks like. Um, a lot of people have asked us over the last couple of weeks, how does um, our current situation um, impact operations? You won't see Lysol as a recommended food here within Inside Tracker, but we, can't, we do have an immunity-focused product that we launched about two weeks ago. Um, this came about because uh, we were listening to our customers or people who wanted to be customers but weren't buying and they said uh, cost is a concern and utility is a concern. So we created a panel that uh, is focused on immunity, stress and sleep. So the biomarkers that are related are specific to those goals. Uh, conveniently, the, they're also related to athletic performance. It's a really good selection of um, things like cortisol and inflammation and iron and vitamin D. Um, in that panel. So we call that panel immunity. It's $189 compared to ultimate, which is $589. Uh, a few of you have, have done ultimate over the, over the years. Um, so you may be more familiar with that. Um, and Quest Diagnostics is, uh, is the lab that we use. They've been deemed um, essential. So labs remain open. And from what we've heard, <laughs> they're pretty empty and the process is really fast because there aren't a lot of people doing tests right now. Uh, because doctors aren't uh, sending patients in for non-essential labs. So we have a discount code set up for the collective beat. It's uh, TCB25. So the collective beat 25, TCB25. Um, if you want that immunity plan, it's only available through insidetracker.com slash immunity. Um, everything else is available through the normal store. Um, and then another option that doesn't involve going to the lab, um, if you have 
a if you have recent blood work so like after february um you could use our diy plan where you upload data that already exists for our analysis on that um, so that option is 119 dollars and uh, the results are back within a couple of days and then with um, any of the lab testing options the results are back normally within a week we're seeing like three or four days uh, recently um, and then so as i mentioned there's that 25 percent code um, tcb5 and then you do receive an additional discount uh, if you wanted to stock up with a couple of tests to use uh, over the next few months or years you have two years to use the test from the date of purchase and if you have an hsa or fsa you can use those funds uh, for any of the lab testing options um, and you can use your card right through the site uh, and that should that should work fine um, are you limited in question how often you can get blood work um, no uh, i i wouldn't recommend doing it more than monthly um, we have sort of like an off menu unlimited plan that people who um, want to test monthly for whatever reason uh, do um, it's mostly professional athletes uh, a lot of major league baseball players do this um, but for for the majority of people i think monthly is is too frequently um, but yeah quarterly is sort of the gold standard um, in our mind yeah i say i typically tell people quarterly um because again, like certain biomarkers like ferritin um, can take, you know, at least three months to see a change. And Carly, now I'm just understanding what the question Jonathan wanted me to ask my answer was. <laughs> I can tell you there was a very big difference. I felt like less trash in general. I was sleeping better. Um, and even like I showed you guys that my inflammation markers were down. Um, some of you know this, but I have an autoimmune disease. Um, of course, Inside Tracker is not here to do medical diagnoses. We're more in a preventative kind of approach to things, but uh, changes in my blood work kind of made me go, huh, and how I was feeling kind of be a little bit like, oh, maybe I need to call my doctor and um, my white blood cell count, whatever, kind of um, got the ball rolling early on something might be happening. Um, so yes, I have rheumatoid arthritis. And so again, keeping my information down is even more important. Um, but I have noticed a huge change, even when I was training um, last year for Ironman Texas and Ironman Wisconsin, having those numbers lower, um, just overall my training, but in day-to-day in -day life, like I, I felt like significantly better. <laughs> uh, speaking of other takeaways that le led to, um, feeling significantly better. So I've, the last several tests I've done, my cortisol, which is your stress hormone, has been a little high, um, just above optimal. And so I didn't think much of it because um, it was just just over the, over the range. Um, now we're in some crazy times and I went back and looked at the cortisol recommendations and particularly one uh, called ashwagandha, which is a, an herbal supplement. Um, so I started taking that and it increases your perception of control, which is interesting. Um, but I started taking it in, I'd say, towards the end of March when like I didn't perceive much control at all. And uh, it's, it's, I felt a lot better um, ever since then. And, and so this was something I learned through Inside Tracker that has had like very practical um, and very impactful um, has been very impactful. Uh, question, are New York labs accepting testing right now? So in New York, New Jersey, New York and New Jersey, we normally require uh, sending a phlebotomist to you for the draw. Um, we work with a lab in Brooklyn to receive those samples and they are processing, I think like 100,000 COVID samples at the moment. So they've switched their operations over entirely to that um, in, uh, for the foreseeable future. So currently we are offline in New York and New Jersey. I don't think we have anyone on, uh, from Canada on here, but uh, in case we do, same, same situation in Canada. Um, in Hawaii, lucky you. Um, 
there are my understanding is there are no Quest Labs in Hawaii, so we use that same uh, mobile phlebotomy um, option where we send a phlebotomist to you. The limitation there is it's a bit of a gamble with um, glucose and the CBC panel um, in terms of stability. So everything else for the most part normally comes back fine, but sometimes those two are unable to be analyzed when that sample gets overnighted, um, usually to Southern California or somewhere um, local where that sample can be analyzed. But everywhere else, we're good. <laughs> um, that's, that's four of us on this call. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wanted to be really nerdy again and just show you kind of the nutrition pages. So I'm going to share my screen again. I was playing around. Um, oh, we have a question, right? Do we? Do we? Do we? No, she's just saying thank you. Mary's up, up um, North Country-ish. Yeah, I in the beautiful land. Um, so just another fun feature beyond the blood work. Um, this is part of the nutrition page, and I know you know we touted about how it's food for you um, based on your blood work. And this is what it looks like. Um, you know, I need to improve my inflammation group, my sugar group, um, you know, my sex hormone testosterone group. So for each of those groups, I need to work on. Like, say, I want to focus on my iron it will give you um, iron, you know, rich foods. And it'll say why, what they're a good source of and give you a recipe on how the heck do I use these beans? Or how am I supposed to get um, more artichokes in? You know, whatever the food might be. Um, and again, it's based on, um, you know, your food preferences again. Like if you will not eat salmon, salmon if you mark that salmon won't come up here so um i think that's a really fun thing and again even as a dietitian um you know we can all kind of fall into that same trap of oh it's really easy to eat the same things over and over again or i don't know what to eat so you know when things are more normal and we can spend a little bit more time in the grocery store and we don't want to just like get in and get out um i usually try to go in here and pick um, you know, one or two groups that I'm focusing on improving and picking a couple foods that I might have not incorporated in a while, or I'm like, oh, I can probably eat more of these, um, and really kind of not just um, focus on improving the biomarkers, but just giving, you know, my diet, my intake a little bit more variety, um, and get a little inspiration on how to use different foods, because I feel like um, you know, you get a lot of information with our platform and sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming. And this is a very simple way of being like, all right, these are the two foods I'm picking and that's what I'm going to work on this week. Um, so it's a fun little tool, maybe just for me, cause I'm a dietitian and I'm kind of <laughs> nerdy when it comes to that stuff, but I really enjoy it. Um, gives a lot of good ideas. And there's another dog making an appearance. Another dog. <laughs> <laughs> Bring your, your dog to the inside tracker. Call we them. actually, um, we had a professional baseball player who came back with high cortisol. And um, this was a couple of years ago. And we did a consult for him. And our dietitian jokingly said, you should get a dog. So he did. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> way. I'm, I'm you totally guys, kidding. I think it's going to help all of your training if you actually get a dog, another dog, if you already have one dog. <laughs> I said that to me too. <laughs> Two dogs are the best way because <laughs> then they same, have each other. Same, same with yeah. bike, same plus one, right? And plus one, just like bikes. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to go to the bathroom without one. I know. Right? Yeah. I know. Mine does, my, one of mine does that too. Mm. Um, do you guys have any other, any questions? <clears throat> Go ahead, you can unmute yourself too, you, or you can type it in the chat. If you can't unmute you, just raise your hand and I will. There you go. Yeah, go ahead, Robin. Um, yeah, I've have been having a lot of inflammation just in my back and my, um, I've been going to my chiropractor, and so I've been trying to add some turmeric, <coughs> excuse me, turmeric, um, and that, you know, I haven't bought a supplement yet because when you go, there's 9,000 choices, so um, this is really timely. So I'm, I'm looking for, and the fact that we can use our FSA or whatever that flex spending, that's yeah. brilliant. So um, 
Yeah, there's got, I think I've got some cortisol issues. I know I have inflammation issues. So I'm really, I'm really glad I was able to get on this Zoom and learn a little bit more. And so. Yeah, happy to help, right? It's, it's like, there, it's, it's always interesting to see like, you, you know, once you had the issues like that are identified, like the little things you can do that really go a long way. And then it's always nice because you can say, okay, I'm going to focus on just my inflammation markers. I'm going to do like these two or three things and really focus on them. And then, you know, when you do a follow-up blood test, you can say, oh, wow, what I did is actually helping. Like, I think that's the greatest thing. Or, you know, you can say like, oh, maybe a lot of people end up, well, an example is they don't, the dose of vitamin D they might start with if their vitamin D is low is too too low. So they're like, okay, obviously I need to increase it. So it's it's nice to be able to see like, okay, this is working for me and mm -hmm. I'm just gonna keep doing it, or maybe I need to, you know, add in something else. So yeah, super cool. Yeah. Glad you, glad you learned a lot. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Any Has anybody on the call used inside tracker before? Yeah. Curious, Scott, have you used Inside Tracker before? <laughs> By the way, we do have a man on the team, <laughs> on the Masseter team. That's that's Ann Scott. <laughs> it's not some random man who jumped into our Zoom call. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> well, I logged in and I saw Jonathan, and I was like, "Ooh, there's another guy on a call." <laughs> it's a great team. I don't blame you for joining. <laughs> the best. <laughs> no, I have not used Inside Tracker. Lekti has, though. Oh, has she? Oh, cool. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you guys have any other questions? Anybody? No. Do you have any good jokes? <laughs> I do, actually. Yeah. Okay, so I'm a teacher, and so one of my second graders told me this the other day on a Zoom call. Um, oh, let me make sure I don't mess it up. Um, <laughs> how, do you know, how can you tell if a pepper is angry? It's up in your face. <laughs> Oh, I like that. <laughs> I love that. I'm gonna use that. Let's get a second grader. <laughs> I do have guys... a question, but I missed the entire call. Like I jumped on late, so that's okay. Okay. What's your question, Michelle? Your question, Lisa. Hi, Jonathan. Nice to meet you. Uh, I email you all the time, but I never <laughs> the trigger on you know getting this. It's a little pricey for me. So like, what would you say is a good like budget version of you know what to do? And I totally get like why you know the cost, but what do you suggest? Like, are there other you know tiers or levels? Did you already talk about that? Yes. So um, we created one called Immunity, which is designed to focus on immunity, sleep, and stress. Yeah. Um, and it's four hundred dollars less than Ultimate. And also covers uh, iron, vitamin D, inflammation, cortisol, uh, uh, glucose, uh, liver enzymes. So it's like basically everything that we're interested in as athletes, magnesium. Um, and I would highly suggest that one. We, okay, awesome. Yeah, we, um, we created that to address um, cost and uh, relevant goals. And then we looked at it again. It was like, wow, this is actually a really good panel for athletes. Um, so it's a little less, it's a little light on the nutrition side. So it doesn't have the lipids, um, but it has pretty much everything else. So, I mean, I have to go somewhere and have my blood drawn, right? And then mail it to you. Uh, where do you live? Omaha, Nebraska. Yeah, so you could go into a quest in Omaha. Um, and then we send you a lab slip, you print that out and bring it in. There's no cost at the lab. And then the results are uploaded to our platform within about a week or so. Okay, cool. And awesome. so that, that plan is only available through insidetracker.com slash immunity. And we have a code uh, TCB25 for 25% off. Okay, capital TCB. Yeah, the collective beat, 25 right. Is it okay? I'm not in it though. <laughs> yes. Yeah, You're fine. fine. You're on the call. It's okay. <laughs> I did invite the ambassador team to the call just oh. to potentially kill um, one bird with two birds with one stone. <laughs> I'm so bad with those. <laughs> um, <laughs> Please. Cool. Thank you. I'll, I'll mute myself now. You're good. Any other funny jokes? <laughs> Jonathan will FaceTime me. 
and I'll pick up and he'll say, oh, wow, so glad I caught you at home. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're quarantined, guys. Yeah. <laughs> get it? <laughs> I get it. You did it. You get it. Chance, Does, Chance is less than amused by it, but... <laughs> Does anybody remember my, my horrible punny joke from the team call? <laughs> anybody? No? I, um, I, pu I put a joke at the end of the team call just to make sure everybody listened to it. And I said I named my iPod the Titanic. <laughs> so every time I plugged it in, it said the Titanic is sinking. <laughs> I have a... So, I have a so correct. The closing, the closing joke that's both relevant to endurance and nutrition. Um, why did the runner stop doing cross country? Why did the why did the vegetarian runner stop going to the cross country? He didn't like the meats. <laughs> I'm just saying it's gotta be something with with meat. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, we have way too much fun. <laughs> Does anybody have any final questions before we jump off? <laughs> All right. Well, if you do come in the meantime, feel free. Yep, you've got one. All right, go ahead. <laughs> okay, am I on? You're yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. So, Jonathan, um, I guess I'm looking at this. I did it in October of 2018. Mm -hmm. How long does my information stay on there? You'll always have it on there. Um, we recommend getting a new test every six months or so at the latest. Um, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't use that 2018 data to make any decisions from, but it'll be useful to compare it to. And you can make some notes in your account. Um, you know, were you training? Were you peaking? Were you in off season? So you can quickly compare where you uh -huh. were then to where you are now. Okay. Thanks. A question. Any others? Bueller? No? Okay. Well, if you do have any questions in the meantime, feel free to email me um, and I will, or I can maybe put their emails in a post, but be mindful, right? <laughs> um, they work with a lot of other people besides just us. <laughs> so if there are, you can either email them or email me and we'll get to the bottom of it. But I wanted to personally thank Stevie and Jonathan again for jumping on another call. Um, and uh, yeah, here's to uh, hopefully getting over this less stressful time too, um, Zen time and uh, cheers to when we're all back in racing again, right? Or at least outside together. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, have a great Sunday. Um, I'll see you all soon and goodbye. <laughs> Thanks for having me.